less now compared to this knowing you Jesus knowing you there is no greater thing you're my all you're the best you're my joy my Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name.
my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His heart
welcome to our service of worship this morning, whether you're here in church with us or whether you're watching online or whether you're listening to the CD uh, later in the week. And can I say welcome again to the Reverend Shaw Thompson. Thank you very much, Shaw, for covering for Gary this week. We very much appreciated what you shared with us last week and look forward to what you'll share with us this week. Just a few announcements to make. Uh, this afternoon uh, in the back car park, the August free will offering drop-off will take place between two o'clock and three o'clock this afternoon. On Tuesday evening, the Kirk session will meet at half past seven, and with the easing of restrictions, the Kirk session is hoping to meet in person in the church halls on, uh, at 7.30 on Tuesday evening. Then on Wednesday evening, we have our August midweek prayer time, and again, we will meet in person at half past seven in the minor hall and everyone is welcome and just to remind you that face masks will need to be worn unless you're exempt and social distancing regulations will be observed as well then next sunday morning worship at 11:30 as usual the speaker will be the reverend gary truman just a reminder if you wish to attend in person then please make sure you book your seat either through church suite the church website or by ringing the church office on 028 9269-8258 and the service will continue to be live streamed. The Reverend Truman will return from holiday tomorrow, that's Monday the 2nd of August. If you require the urgent assistance of a minister before then, then please contact one of the elders. And then finally a reminder, following the benediction this morning, could everyone here in church please remain seated and the stewards will direct you to the appropriate exit. Free will offering envelopes can be placed in the plates by the doors. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for your welcome this morning. And it's good to be with you and to lead worship again this morning. The psalmist says in Psalm number 46, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our refuge and our strength. What a wonderful thought that is, that in the midst of life, that God is the consistent, loving, heavenly Father that has his hand upon us at all times. With that thought, let us unite together in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father God, we rejoice in the wonder of the gospel. We rejoice that you love us unconditionally and that you've set your hand upon us and that you lead us, you guide us, you direct us, you never leave us. And as we come here today to worship you, Lord, you're here with us already, we know that. And so we come to offer our praise to you, the living God beside whom there is no other, the God who is sovereign in all things, the God who set the sun and the moon and the stars in their own place and called them by their name, the God who made us and put us in the very place you want us to be. Lord, we rejoice in that. We bless you, we praise you that you're the God of all righteousness and truth and unchanging. Lord, you're the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. The one who is ever faithful to his promises and the one who is sovereign. You're a God who is holy and righteous, the one who abounds in mercy. And we come to you today, Lord, as sinful people. Your people, yes, saved by grace, yes, but Lord, still in need of forgiveness. We confess our sin to you, that we have sinned and fallen short of your word standard. We have gone after the things that we ought not to. We have neglected those things that we should have taken care of. Lord, we are poor servants in your kingdom's work. Father, forgive us, we pray. Cleanse us afresh that we would know fellowship with you and with one another and that we would know the blessings of being a member of your church on earth. Our Father, thank you for bringing us together again today. 
Thank you for everyone that will be listening on the live stream or indeed on the CD player or indeed, Lord, off the internet later on this week. Thank you for the, during this pandemic that we've been able to meet together in such ways, able to keep together and to worship together. And we pray, Lord, wherever we are this morning, that we would know your blessing upon us, that we would know your hand upon us, and that, Lord, your word would indeed be food and drink to our souls. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. And they were going to read there Colossians 1, verses 1 and 2, and then from chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. And Gary will read this word for us. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. And then move into chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, is whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with his practices and you have put on your new self which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the creator here there is no greek or jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave or free but christ is all and is in all therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another forgive as the lord forgave you and over all of these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity let the peace of christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdoms, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Thank you, Gary. We want to take a moment or two this morning uh, to bring prayers of intercession. We're all very aware that in these last 18 months or so, things have not been the same. And many good friends and members of the church we haven't seen or spoken to in all of that time. And it has put a pressure on us in some ways, and we feel, well, we feel sometimes lonely and we feel isolated and that's for us that are able to get out i'm very very aware that many of our senior people those who are in long-term nursing care those who are confined to their own home they don't see many people at all and so we want to pray especially this morning for people in those groups that don't see many folks and feel lonely isolated and indeed sometimes under threat during these days I want to remember Gary and Marianne as they have enjoyed a few days break and pray that they would come back to us refreshed after their holiday. Also, we want to pray for our own Presbyterian Church in Ireland, right throughout the island, and those of us who serve overseas. Again, there have been many, many pressures on, and we all have stories to tell 
about loved ones and close family members who have died and, and the pain of not being able to go to a funeral or to, to grieve properly. And that, that has been nationwide and indeed worldwide. So we want to pray for folks in that situation today. And perhaps we have not just been as keen to remember the sterling service that our National Health Service has given us during this time. All the folks that work in our hospitals, from our consultants right down to the ancillary staff, to our GP surgeries who have done a remarkable job in very difficult circumstances. We want to thank God for all of those folk and pray that they would continue to know strength as they go forward. Then finally, we just want to, to pray for a number of situations across the world. I, I don't know whether it's just me or not, but I, I like to buy a paper since I retired, especially on a Saturday, and to read what's going on around the world. And maybe if you're following the events in Afghanistan or Turkey or Venezuela, wherever that may be, you will know that we live in a very challenging world, a very difficult world, a world where many Christian people are being persecuted for Christ's sake. And we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted today simply because they would name the name of Christ. So let us unite together in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you for this gift that you give us, that we avail ourselves of every day when we come before you in prayer. And we thank you, Father, that you tell us in your word that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much with you. We thank you, Lord, for the church of Jesus Christ that meets in this place in Banbridge Road. We thank you for every man, woman, and child that makes up your church in this place. And we thank you for our pastor, for Gary, and for Marianne, his helpmate. We pray that they may know your blessing today as they enjoy a few days rest before taking up the reins of work again. We pray for others who may have been able to take a few days off and that they would know refreshment and strength. But Lord, today we want to pray especially for the senior members of our congregation, those who may be in hospital, those who have been in nursing care, those who are lonely perhaps at home, with very little contact with people and family during these days. We ask, Lord, that you would draw near to them, especially today. And if they're listening with us this morning, Lord, may they just feel part of our worship. May they know the love of your people, and may they know the fellowship of your blessed Holy Spirit. Lord, we're especially mindful of those who have been bereaved during these times. Very, very difficult, challenging circumstances for all but especially for those who have lost someone close and dear to them. May they just be comforted and strengthened by your Holy Spirit, and may the prayers and good wishes of your people help them through their time of sorrow. Lord, we thank you for the work of our Presbyterian Church across the whole island of Ireland and those who serve overseas. We pray for every congregation and every fellowship and every member that today we may be blessed of you and that, Lord, you might continue to use us, that we might be enabled to continue the work of your kingdom and to see it grow and that we might be salt and light in this world and across your world. We want to take a moment again today, Lord, to thank you for the work of our National Health Service. We thank you for every man and woman that works there. And we thank you for the work that they do day in, day out, year in, year out, and sometimes without much appreciation. But Lord, we thank you for each one of them, for the field in which they work, the work which they do, that goes to make the team. And thank you, Father, for the work that they have done during these very, very difficult times. We pray that they too may know your blessing and help as they continue to work under such strain. Lord, we remember various situations through the world today. We think of the situation developing in Afghanistan today, the threat from Iran and Iraq. We remember the awful situation in Lebanon and Syria, the awful fires that have taken place in Turkey, 
Remember the awful situation the folk in Venezuela find themselves in. And so, Lord, the list goes on. Many countries in dire need. And we pray that your people that work there, that seek to witness for Christ in those situations, may know your help. We pray, Lord, that they may be able to endure under persecution and that the church of Jesus Christ would grow in those places. Lord, we ask these things in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want this morning to think with you for a little while about the church and about the language we use in the church. And language is a very, very unique thing, isn't it? Uh, even when you go to the scriptures, you find there that, that people have different accents and dialects. You remember the situation where Peter, on the night of our Lord Jesus' arrest, was identified by his accent that he was a Galilean. And you might have an accent or a wee word or two you say that, that is unique to where you were born. And I thought I might uh, do a wee thing with you this morning. I don't know where you've ever gone online. There's much talk about the Irish language and about Ulster Scotch and all the rest these days. But I wonder if you've ever taken the, the test to see whether you can speak Ulster Scotch or no. You can do that. You can go online and there's a, there's a test there. So I thought I might test you a little bit and show that this is something that comes to us naturally. Now, very, very good friend of mine, a cousin of mine, took his wee boy to the movies, to the cinema, to st see the wee movie Stuart Little. It's a bit aged now, but some, some of the children remember Stuart Little. So in the middle of the cinema, in the silence, and his name was Stuart, strangely enough, got up, and he says, Daddy, where's the moose now? Did you get that? What did he say? Where's the mouse now? You see, so... Where's the moose now? Makes perfect sense to me. So you go out for a, a walk along the shore in Port of Oge and you meet a friend and it has been a bad old day and he says to you, that's a brave neck now. So what does he mean? A brave neck now? That's a lovely evening. <laughs> uh, well, that's what it means. And then you're talking about a friend. Oh, Tam's journey's a brave creature. Yeah, he a word for the Grabians. Now, that's a wee bit more complicated. Did you get that one? Let me be slow. Cham, Tam's Jimmy's a brave creator. He has a word for the grave of Now, let me explain. Tam's Jimmy. Now, if you were in Port of Oakley, you would know exactly who Tam's Jimmy is. It's Tom Mahood's son, James. Perfectly simple. Tam's Jimmy is a brave creator. A nice chap. A lovely fella. A nice person to know. A.A. has a word for the Grabians. He likes the Grey Abbey people. You see, Grey Grey Abbey, Yins, people. It's, I don't know where else the Scotch is a language or not, to tell you the truth, because when I picked up the courage to speak to my minister at home about getting into the ministry, you know what he said to me the first thing? He says, well, you would have to learn to speak properly first. Well, we proved him wrong, didn't we? <laughs> anyway, language is a very strange thing, and yet it's a very unique thing. And even in the Bible, if I could continue the illustration, if you were at home in Port of Ogie where I was living, people would say to you, we are at the meeting. We are at church, of course. But you see, that's a very biblical thing to say. Because the church... Is not the building we're in. And this pandemic has proved that more than any other time in our history, perhaps, because the church meets online on the internet. We have our Zoom prayer meetings and all together, which tells us that the church is not the, the structures that we sit in and meet in, but the church is you and me together in Christ. The word that he uses here, Paul, in the letter that we're going to look at very briefly this morning, Colossians, is to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. And he uses two words here to say who the church of Jesus Christ really is. The church is the ecclesia. That's the Greek word he uses. And what that means is the people who have been called out from the world 
who meet together. Thus the word, the meeting, or the assembly. Or our brethren, friends, speak about being in the meeting. That means that they're in fellowship in their church, or they're then in the assembly. We speak about it of being communicant members, but it's the church, the assembly, the called out ones. The building has nothing to do with it. And then, of course, the word kirk that we have brought over from Scotland comes from the Greek word kurake, the kirk. And if you think about some of the places at home here in Northern Ireland, White Kirk outside Ballywalter, uh, the church in Ballymena, High Kirk, we bring that from Scotland. But the meaning is always not about a building, but about people. We are the people of God when we name the name of Jesus Christ. And so when Paul writes here to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae, we could put in there to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ that meet at Banbridge Road. Because we are the church, God's people, who meet here. But, but just a word about that. You remember the church, not, not because you, you were born here, not because you were baptized here, not because your name's on the register here. You're a member of the church of Jesus Christ here because you have trusted Christ. That you know Christ as your Savior and your Lord. And that's what you're trusting in. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Remember one time visiting in hospital, it was in Newton Arts, so I'll, I'll, that's all I'll reveal about this, but uh, we were looking after another congregation in Greenwell Street, and I went to see a person in hospital that I'd never met before. And there were four gentlemen in the wee ward, and you know, if you've been in that situation in hospital, and their minister comes in, and you try to pretend you can't hear, but everybody in the wee ward can hear every word. So what my practice would have been, if everybody was agreeable, I would have spoken to the four men in the ward, and prayed with the four of them. So I prayed with this man and we had a lovely wee chat. And when I was leaving, this, this other man said to me, are you, are, you the, are you the minister in Greenwell Street? I said, yes, I'm the assistant. I belong to Greenwell Street. I said, do you? Oh, yes, he says, I'm a member there. I'm a member there. This was in 1986 now. He says, tell me, how's Mr. Michael Rath doing? So says, as far as I know, Mr. Michael Rath's perfectly happy. He was the minister there. To Mr. Michael Rath, father and son, Mr. Michael Rath was buried in 1948. <laughs> Society's happy, and that's all I said. But you see, there was a man who had no connection with the church. He had went to Sunday school in the church, but he had no connection, and he wasn't a member of the church because he wasn't a Christian discovered that when I went back to see him. So being a Christian is being a member of the church. And how does that happen? It happens when you and I come to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord. That's how simple it is. That's how you become a church member. That's how you become part of the body of Christ, as Paul speaks about in other places. By putting your faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. That you believe in him and you trust him. And you become part of that church. But I want us to think a wee bit this morning then. About what the church is in relation to what Paul says here. In this passage in Colossians chapter 3. He gives us great advice here. He tells us many things. But he starts off doesn't he. By telling us that the church is something different from other clubs without going into too much detail. But it's very obviously true that being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ is very different from being a member of the golf club or the hockey club or whatever. Because it, it's not about just card membership, if I can put it that way. It's about life and death and soul membership. And what he tells us is that the church needs to exhibit certain things. It needs to exhibit, if you like, a process whereby 
we live out our life every day in the knowledge and teaching of scripture. One of the best definitions of how we should be as individuals and how we should be part of his church we find in the shorter catechism in the, in the question, what is sanctification? And if you remember your catechism, sanctification is a work of God's free grace whereby we are received and in the whole man after the image of God we are renewed and enabled more and more to die unto sin and live unto righteousness. What that means is very simple. If we are going to be God's people and if we are God's people by, by confession of our mouths we need to live out that and to show that the work of grace has been wrought in our souls and we need to be renewed like the, the, the new man, the new image. But that image is much more deeper than physical appearance. It's, it's an inward work, isn't it? And we need to live more unto righteousness and to die unto sin. Just let's read what Paul says here. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. In other words, what Paul is saying, if we're members of God's church, if we're Christians, there's a lifestyle that we need to live. And that lifestyle must be a lifestyle, yes, of salt and light, of being different in the world, of being his people, of being unique, if you like, that we live to honor him. And living unto righteousness is, in these days, no easy thing because we are sinners at heart and sinners sin, and we know that. But by God's grace, every day we're given the strength to go on and to live for him. The next thing I want to just highlight from the passage is this. That just as the church needs to be set apart and we need to be sanctified, we need to be set apart in that we need to be together. Solidarity, if you like. We need to be together. I think this has been a remarkable time in our whole history, but the church's history, and there's been so many good things come out of the pandemic. Like, I... I have been amazed, I have to say. I'm not an electronics person at all. But, but the only thing that amazes me about my computer is that it works when I turn it on. That amazes me. But, but for instance, if you come on to the Zoom prayer meeting when it's set up there, now it's a lovely thing to look forward to that on a Wednesday evening, that folk that you haven't been together with and folk that you have a real love for and we're prevented from being together, yet we're enabled to do that. And folk in the church have taken the, the use of their skills and the technologies available and have enabled us to, to be involved in that. That's a wonderful thing. We have been able to, to put online the, the, the services in church, the activities that we've been doing, and so folk that otherwise would never see or hear are able to be part of it. And so the church has been amazing. And and. While I'm just a member like you here, I'm not on the session or committee, but I just think I want to say a word of thanks to all of you who have continued to support the church financially because church doesn't go on its own, you know. And that has been so encouraging. The church still is there. We're still here. And we're still together. But there's a concern I have as well on the other side of that coin. And my, current, my concern is this. That, that whenever we get back to what we call normal, will all of our people come back? I, I hope they do, and I hope more will come back because of what we've seen, tried to do uh, through the internet and all the rest. But that's a challenge for us as God's people. It's a fresh challenge, maybe even a greater challenge than before lockdown because we, we have to make ourselves, if you like, more available and more accessible that people might want to come and join with us and what's this Christianity thing all about it's very difficult isn't it 
But yet, to being together is a very important thing. It's a very important. Listen to what Paul says here. He says in verse 12, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. He's telling us to, to reach out, to be like him, and to go with to people when the time is right. And we need to do that. We need to show our own members first that we care for them. And we need to, to speak when we can and use whatever means we can to remind folk that we're in this together and that we are God's people together and that we can make a difference together. And then one last thing I want to just speak about in this is, is the sincerity that we, we need to show in the service that we have in the kingdom's work. And you know, as never before, perhaps, we see the gifts that God can use in so many different ways. You know, I, I, one of the, the highlights for me of, of our YouTube channel and our website in Banbridge Road is listening to the music. And what a, what a great array of talent we have of singers and musicians and obviously whizzes on the computer that can put all of that together. And it's a lovely thing to go onto YouTube and to listen to that. And yes, I can work YouTube because, uh, well, let me just share with you. I rebuilt an engine watching YouTube. Can you believe that? That's, but that's nothing to do with this. But YouTube's a great tool to listen to different preachers and to listen to the praise in this place. It's a wonderful thing. But that all comes about with people giving time and effort to put all of that together. And here's the challenge for us going forward. The challenge is, is to live for Christ, to be in Christ, and to seek the lost for Christ. And, and how are we going to do that? Well, in the fullness of time, we trust that we'll be able to have one-to-one -one contact again. It's, a, it's a, a lovely thing when you think about it, and we miss that dreadfully. But before that, we have the, the gift of prayer, of course. And what a tremendous thing that is. And, and here, here's, a, here's a, a suggestion or an encouragement to you today. If maybe during lockdown, and, and hands in the air, lockdown has been difficult for me, I have to tell you. Discipline is very difficult. But here's a discipline for you. Do you pray for the work of the congregation every day? I'm just asking you that. Maybe if you're out of the habit, why not just take a wee slot every day, even two or three minutes during your prayer time, to pray for, for Gary and for Philip and the Kirk Session the Committee and all the leaders in the church. But pray for them, that God would strengthen them and help them to keep on doing what they're doing. Maybe you have a friend that you work with that you haven't seen or been in their contact personally with them for a while, why do you not pray for them? Pray, pray especially for their family situation. If they're a Christian, thank God for them. If not, pray for them. And if you can, why not lift the phone? Lift the phone and you'd be amazed the difference a wee phone call can make to someone who's lonely or even someone who feels forgotten. Someone who's in the periphery of things. And we things can make such a big difference. And the time will come again, of course, when in the course of events we're able to speak to people and uh, speak to them about the Lord's a great thing. But, but the one thing maybe we shouldn't do is when we're let loose, if you can use that term, is maybe not go like a bullet a gate, but be gentle and take the opportunities that come. It's amazing how, how opportunities come along. Some of you will remember the late Dr. John Gervin. He, he was a tremendous evangelist and preacher and teacher, moderator of the General Assembly, senior minister of Hill Street, Lurgan. But he, he came to Greenwell Street <coughs> and he taught me many things without actually saying I'm teaching you. I, I just watched and observed. But he says to me, Sean, 
speak to anybody about anything to get into conversation and be patient and let the conversation go to where you want to go. So, so I took this on board as a young man visiting around the homes in Newton Arts. And we used to meet on a Tuesday evening uh, for, for a time of prayer and for a wee bite to eat before the midweek meeting. So Dr. Sterrett, my boss, said to me, well, Sean, what, what did you do today? What were you visiting today? I said, say, Mr. Sterrett, I just took the afternoon. I watched Alex Higgins playing snooker all afternoon. He says, what? Maybe, maybe you're guilty of this or maybe you enjoyed this, but some of our older ladies loved Alex Higgins. Now, I'm not asking you to put your hand up. I don't know if you, if you remember him even. But I went to this door this day and a lovely wee Christian lady Oh, Sean, I'm, I'm, I loved, I'm glad to see you. She says, could you ever come back later? Alex is on the television. <laughs> well, I said, listen, that's all right. So I used to watch the snooker in the afternoon with a lot of my older people. But hey, it got to where I needed to get to. I was patient. I took my time and I listened and I watched. And then when the situation came, was able to witness to Christ. Let me, let me give you one example of what I mean by this. One of the tips Dr. Gervin used to give me, he says, if, if the conversation's dry when you go to your house and there's photographs, ask the question, who's this? So I tried this out first and I wasn't a dog lover at the time, I have to admit, I am now. But I said to this little gentleman, say that's a lovely, is that a Springer Spaniel? And the wee man just went into floods of tears. Floods of tears. The wee spaniel had to be put down only about three weeks beforehand. And he was on his own and it was his life's companion. I didn't understand at the time, but I do now about just how much the wee man missed. But I built a friendship up with that man through speaking about his dog because he just loved to tell me about when he was fit enough, how they used to go to the shore together along Strangford Law Shore and all the rest. So speaking to people, getting to know people and then sharing Christ with people. That's the work of the church, isn't it? To show people that we love them, that we're concerned for them, and we want to bring them to know the Savior that we love. But one final thing I want to say to you today and share with you is the challenges that the church faces. Paul sets out for us here many things in this passage about being God's chosen people in a difficult world, about ridding ourselves of sin and living to righteousness. This was written over 2,000 years ago, but it could have been written this morning, couldn't it? Isn't the church in the very same position that Paul wrote to in Colossae? Aren't we strangers in an alien world? Don't we need to profess Christ before men? Don't we need to live out our life before men? Don't we need to stand up for the truth of Scripture? It hasn't changed. We are God's chosen people in a chosen place at a chosen time for his kingdom's work. And he challenges first and foremost to know him, to love him and to serve him through faith alone and Christ alone. And then he challenges us to be salt and light, to be his people in this dark and difficult world, and it is that. But then, to know the blessing of people coming to faith and to see the church grow and to see his kingdom extended. That is what we pray for and work for. That the glory might be Christ alone. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for your word to us. We thank you, Lord, that you place your word deep within our hearts and that by your spirit you speak to us of those things which are eternal. Thank you for your word to us this morning, Lord. May we indeed rid ourselves of all those things that hinder us. May we live more and more unto righteousness. May we be salt and light in this world. And may we live for your glory. For Christ's sake. Amen.
Hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us and all of God's people this day and forevermore. Amen.